Well, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we'll begin with uh, approval of the minutes of last meeting. Somebody wants to make a motion on those? I'll so, second. Mike makes a motion, and Mike L. makes a motion. Bruce seconds. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion carried. And if we want to do the... Uh, Make a motion on the building permits. Mike W. Makes a motion. Okay. We've got a second on those. Bruce. Bruce seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Okay. Well, we'll get into the uh, meat of the order here. Jeff. Third hand. We're supposed to be here. Yeah. Okay. Tell yeah. us anything you want to bitch about the uh, building permits, the process, the inspector. Anything you got problems with? Uh, I suppose this would be my opportunity to say what I pretty much been saying for a while. No, I've never met Mike Levins. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Never, never had a project that uh, has gone that way. Uh, my um, uh, <laughs> my frustration uh, was, and now when I got online last night and looked. Somebody must have done some improvement. So, so my my snag all along was uh, I, I, uh, I realize I'm not uh, the smartest person, but the real frustration I found was for someone who's wanting to try to be doing things correctly and and wanting to try and do things the, the way the the city the direction the city's going, and I support the city's. Uh, uh, constant uh, desire for improvement. Um, somehow, I guess I thought there was a, a, a fairly massive step, which isn't so much where I got hung up. My hang up was the following, and uh, not uh, don't don't get too focused on others. You know, just be focused on the fact that. I'm just the limited guy trying to do things correctly. Um, I can recall standing at the uh, Dutch door of City Hall and saying, you know, in fact, I, I think the real, the first project where we ran into something was uh, Sanford had a water main break and they had whoever come in and do the work and then right away Steve wanted concrete done. And I think I've been following in the paper that, okay, no, no, there's maybe some different things I need to be aware of. And, uh, but I, I remember standing at the Dutch doors there and saying, okay, uh, if things change, you know, what do I need to do? And uh, I was told, well, it's all on the website. And I said, well, you know, help me out, which, which website? Well, there is one website. I think at the time there was four websites. And as of last night, I could find three websites for the city of Hillsborough, North Dakota. Uh, one on Facebook and two not on Facebook. And again, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm pleased when my cell phone works the same way today as it did yesterday. Beyond that, when things works haywire, I, I'm pretty clueless. Well, so I, I, I guess I thought there could have been a better answer there or that I need to, to step up and be more aware of stuff myself, which website's being supported the most and which isn't. 
And at the time when there was four, two of them seemed to be pretty actively kept up. One looked like it was just hanging out there. Well, anyway, um, uh, when I did sit down then, so this goes back to June, July. When I did sit down then and look, uh, and I don't, I forget which page I printed off, but clear as can be, there was a page, there was a section that said, yeah, if, if you're doing this or this, you do not need a permit. And, uh, and I printed that page, and uh, I know I showed it to Levi. I, I, looking at you guys, I don't recall, I don't think, Mike would have been the other, I don't know if I brought it, mentioned it. Uh, not, that I, Mike. not that I remember. Okay. So anyway, uh, I guess my thinking was I'm glad the city's constantly trying to improve, but I really thought uh, there was a lot of gray area as far as what site and, 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 and which of the areas, you know, Blevins or Crest, I'll say, that you're supposed to be in. And, uh, you know, and I... I, I I don't know. I, I mean, I would not want a world where everyone's like me. Uh, that would be no good. But, uh, uh, you know, and, and I think if someone's blatantly doing something wrong, there should be some teeth, you know, to get after them. And yet, uh, I was thinking in June, boy, if a person's crying, um, th there is some real vagueness there. Well, now, last night when I got on, uh, somebody's done some work since June. On it because uh, I, I thought there was more clarity in it. Now, I, I, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> you guys might still be getting smart, but I'm not. Um, uh, so I, I really think someone improved the site. Uh, or, or someone did something. So, but, uh, so that, my, my, that was my biggest mm, frustration all along was, uh, you know, I, I asked for help here and was uh, really, really thought could have, could have been better. Yeah, I'm disappointed to hear, Jeff, that, you know, they didn't take a personal approach and actually bring the website or, you know, point out on it. And uh, uh, I don't know if you'd want to share who you were talking to, but... I, I can't say with certainty, but she may have left. No. Okay, so it does. Um, and then uh, that's something that we'll have to go back, Mike, and make sure now that we got Sarah as the new right. admin, um, and again, she's going to be responsible for the website uh, upgrades and things, but uh, I'll have to visit with Ashley and, and Sarah and kind of make sure that, because, you know, the bottom line is you're exactly right. It's, it's about customer service. If you come into the office and they just tell you to go to the website, well, boy, I'd, I've been kind of torqued off. <laughs> You know, they, they should be there for you as a citizen of Hillsborough and as a contractor to be able to take and make sure that that's right, so. And I'm fairly certain of the six of us in here, I'm not one of the most computer comfortable. And, and there's, well, there's, there's, there's a, you <laughs> might be better yeah, than you, some you, of us. <laughs> you better back that up a little bit. But there's a number of citizens that are there's the same. three here that I know are better than me. So. In the same shoes. And, and again, we have to take that into account. So I will take and make a, a mental note to, to take and visit. Try to, as part of the improvement process, make sure that we're more customer friendly when you come to the office. Then. There should be, a, if, when they're going to say, go to the website. They better be able to say which website. Well, or, or and type we, the address out on a piece of paper. Meet standing at the Dutch door there in the office, and they don't have the courtesy to be able to take and smooth that screen around and say, "Okay, here's the website, and this is what we think you need to do." Yeah. We we went to the online permit process, which I think is is kind of an important step, so that we get ahead of it. But uh, I'm somewhat disappointed. Well, I am disappointed that there was a more of a personal approach to take right. and help out. So I'll take a visit with uh, Ashley and, and now with Sarah, I just met her this week basically, but make sure that she's more customer focused when people come into the office. And, 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 and I, I, even in that exchange, uh, I, uh, I've, I've always been pleased with Desiree's 
demeanor. Um, I think she maybe just didn't realize how limited some people are. So, and, and she's a computer whiz, let's face it. <laughs> well, yeah. young people don't understand yep. the struggles, yep. the, the rest, what the rest of us are dealing with. I mean, Mike is younger than the rest of us and probably has more tech, technical expertise. And there are things that I struggle with and can't explain to people. Yeah, they're supposed to be tools, they're not supposed to be obstacles. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's the song that I think I've been singing since June, uh, I, I guess. And uh, um, I don't know, you know, the, 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 the fee structure is certainly different. Um, uh, uh, I, I don't want, uh, I'm neither qualified for nor want the mic. Levin's position, but the, the what is it, the 150 an hour from the time he leaves till the time he gets back home? Um, I think that's the way it reads. Um, it's uh, um, it's it's uh, substantial. Well, I think we had uh, we've had projects in town that were changed because of the costs of the their proposed project and the inspection process added to that. Like I think one of the neighbors, when they put their shed down, they were going to go put a shed on a cement slab. Well, I think they altered the project in order to just not have to deal with that. And, and, and I think Bruce, you're bringing up a good point. And, and Jeff, I, that's one of my concerns is, is that we kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater when we come up with the new procedures, in my opinion, Mike, that uh, I thought that in a way we were trying to just get rid of an obligation that probably was working pretty well, except how do we do new construction? And <laughs> Well, we went from here to here. To there, yep, and we got to come back to the middle here somehow. Yeah. And I think that uh, Mike, you know, in the planning and zoning committee, uh, should have the approval process for local projects. I, uh, I think that you know the city, you know the contractors, and I think that that's a big thing. Now, what I do think Mike Levins could bring is when we start going into Riverwalk and we start having brand new buildings, houses out there, I think that there should be kind of a process where he becomes more actively involved because we're probably going to have builders from around you know, the region that come in. And I don't know, I, I definitely don't, Mike, you might have a better, you know, uh, insight to this, but uh, I don't know how these builders are good or bad or, you know, some of the ones, like I say, I had some, I struggled with Jordal for a while because, you know, the way that he approaches his construction projects and some of the things that he did. So I think it would be kind of good to have, you know, that new construction process yeah kind of where Mike Blevins goes, and I would like to have planning and zoning and you, Mike, come back and do the local things to give the approval, you know, that you take more responsibility for that, but that's my two bits worth. Well, the, one of the ways I think, think about it is that in the main part of town, okay, you say somebody's going to upgrade their electrical, okay, whoever comes in there and upgrades their electrical, they have to that person has to make sure it's inspected by yep. inspected by the state. Yep. You know, so do we really need Mike Blevins to take care of that building permit? No. No, that's a perfect example of you know, no, not needed. That's another 150 that he would charge. Yeah. And it's the yeah. same with plumbing, I think. They have to be inspected by the state. Well, the cement work, I think we're smart enough to do the cement work, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those are the things. That's why I say it. If it's local and it's a, you know, if it's a refurbishing or an upgrade that I would feel perfectly comfortable with Mike and, and the rest of you making those calls, if it's new construction where you're digging down, you're putting brand new foundation, all, all new construction, then I think there's a position for, for Mike to be in. I do kind of, again, he makes three trips on a new building is the way I understand it. Well, that's... Geez, that's four hundred and fifty dollars, basically, that goes into construction. 
three times that. Yep, three times, so 450 up, 150. Well, that's, isn't it 150 an hour? Well, I think he starts the clock when he leaves Mapleton, and it, it's like a 35 minute. Uh, I'd have to go back and So he's on the ground an hour and a half at a minimum. Yep. And, and so that's, you know, uh, four and a half hours at 150 bucks a and, piece. And right. I, can't, I can't figure out what he did on the chicken scratch would be another example. When he comes to do a building inspection to condemn or to set the standards for upgrades, that's a pretty extensive process too. So I'd have to ask Ashley what, it, what that cost. But uh, yeah, it's... Can we be off the record for 30 seconds? Only if you turn the recorder off. <laughs> that Mike Blevins comes to do that work. Mike or the planning and zoning should be the ones that go in and actually say, okay, we're going to condemn this building. I think politically that that would be asking a little bit too much, whereas Mike not being, you know, Blevins not being a part of the community, he can come in and do that dirty work for us, and we can kind of just, you know, yeah. wash our hands of that, those types of things. But uh, Well, I don't have the expertise to go over there and look at it. It just looks... All I can say is, yeah, it's just like a, a auto stuff. My dad was a car dealer. I should be knowledgeable about cars and engines and all of that. And I always tell people, I don't really understand anything. If it rolls, it's a good thing from my perspective. <laughs> but sometimes, if I listen to it, I can say, well, there's, I know there's something wrong. And I can look at something like that building over there and say, you know, I think there might be something wrong. Well, now we're pretty sure there's a lot wrong. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but then we need somebody with that expertise yep. Yep. that's external to us. Especially when you're talking, I mean, you're condemning a building, so I mean, yep. you got to have you got to have that expertise outside of Hillsboro that doesn't have a right. Yeah. So I think for that kind of stuff, it's and that's where I see Mike Levin. It's the two two things that he can do for us is kind of that new construction to make sure that. Builders that come in, contractors come in from outside of town. You know, he probably has worked with them with all the different municipalities that he works with and knows them. And then, like I say, any condemnation or inspections for condemnation, I think, is an important one for him to do. Yeah. The rest of it I would like to bring back, you know, into your fold and, and planning and zoning to, to uh, kind of, if it's, like I say, if it's a shed or it's a, a deck, or even if it's a new windows and doors and stuff, you still would be able to take and yeah. do that and work with the contractors and probably have a better rapport than that. But uh, well, I think the uh, you know like the garden shed thing went from five dollar permit to over two hundred on some of these, and it's people had second thoughts about doing them. <laughs> yep, yep. And I think so. it's important, again, we want people to continue to improve, but we don't want to be known as a small city that taxes itself to death or, yeah. you know. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that I would say is that if indeed there are these websites and changes are being made to these websites, there needs to be a tickler on that. They have to state exactly, and you have to see the history. If you're producing documents like that, you need to have an exhaustive list of, all, of the changes as they're made and need to be dated. And part of the problem, just to go back to that portion, Jeff, was is that, you know, the HEDC did advertising and they had the cup of coffee and then they went to the, the new slogan and did some of those things. And now when we stopped giving them $10,000 for advertising, then those were supposed to be merged together. But unfortunately, there's still. So I think you can still find when it says "coffee cup away" on if you if you Google it just right. So what what I have to do is go in. But we don't. We only own the one domain name, and so, and I, I can't remember which paper had the one a cup of coffee away. Somebody had bought that domain name, and so they would would sell it back to us. So, but I'll go back and double check that. I'll Google it a couple of times myself and. Uh, See, and then Trail County EDC also has links into ours, so I can see where it's, it's confusing sometimes if you don't pull it up, but you should be able to go to City of Hillsborough, North Dakota, and it should bring ours up uh, automatically. Yeah, and the other one must be Grove, Hillsborough, and I don't know if 
Facebooks. Yeah. yeah, now the social media will be different than the website, and the, the social media is hooked onto our website too, so, which it does have a lot of good information, but to be honest, I, I don't look at it all that well. I just say, hey, you've got to get something out there. Like if we have an electrical outage or something like that, put it on. Or when, she, when Ashley closed up the other day, I told her put it on social media so people know that the city hall is closed because of the weather and stuff. So those are good ones there. But uh, that goes back, Mike will tell you, we as a commission have been talking about trying to get that emergency notification system. We just haven't settled on it. I'd like to, I'd like to take and do that, uh, find a cheaper one that uh, works. But uh, the old one that Levi set up was it was associated with the school system. And I, I don't like that uh, that process because I want to be separate from the, the school, basically. The school board should be able to do what they want for their notifications, and I'd like to have the city be able to do severe weather warnings and all those types of things. But we we have to have a couple of options to look at before we get to, to that point. But that would also kind of fix some of those things you're talking about. Well, I think it's important that there be a distinction between the school and the city. Yep. It seems to me that our water tower image is pretty blame close to our school's image. And well, then I worry about the liability. What if something goes wrong? Yeah. You know, Paula could come back and slap us pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but I, Mike will tell you that we're, we're working on that. Yeah. My, my, my comments were largely to and clarify some of the gray areas and yet I'm going to circle back and kind of create one. So uh, just I, I, I'm agreeing with what I'm hearing uh, and, and I'm, what I'm about to say isn't designed to have it be Levens do this three times but uh, I guess when we when we pour concrete in Grand Forks or West Fargo, Fargo uh, there's three inspections. I mean, there's, there's the permit, uh, but uh, they come out and inspect uh, before, what is it? When you have a state, it's inspected. Uh, they inspect it. Uh, I think you have to tell them when you're going to pour, and then they want to be there when you pour or during the pour or after the pour. They want to make sure nobody's sidewalk got moved or <laughs> driveway got moved over type of thing. <laughs> That's 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 the one that they're really particular about, and on the phone all the time comparing pictures from before to you know pictures when it's being poured, and I'm not sure why they come a third time, but uh, they say they come a third time, but uh, but I I I, yeah. I uh, that that's a lot of trips I think, but yet uh, well I know that at the plant. There are two, and the, and the second one is the one, the day of the pour, yeah. and that's uh, that includes the sampling of the, yeah. so you you know the core sampling, yeah. and uh, and then I I've seen times where they came back and actually cut samples too, yeah. but that was I think that was over here at the hospital where I actually saw them do the three where they. The stake out the day of the pour, and then they came back and cut a core sample to verify that the dried out result was yeah. what they expected. Anything I'm else? You're going to have more competent people. <laughs> well, we were more, we were too. I thought maybe more contractors. I guess I have questions that, you know, I, uh, I don't know, what do we use for a building code in town? It's a state. A state building code. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, if you happen to stop in Mayville to, to their city offices, um, there's, there's, I think, two tables worth of every document you'd want to go and permit for this. Uh, Something for that, you know, for the different uh, their new development. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the 120-page uh, North Dakota Building Code. Sure, um, it's all printed off, available, and you know, uh, uh, to 
some degree, I almost, I, I guess, would suggest, I don't know, may, maybe Hillsborough consider printing some of that and then approaching it the same way John Hams does with contractors with the uh, landfill, saying, well, here's the rules, sign it. Uh, you know, it, kind of think, well, let's print this off, let's give it, you know, the city present this to those and say, here, here sign, sign this that you've received this. Um, I could see that accomplishing a uh, number. Um, yeah, and I, I think all our, uh, the building permit and all the uh, codes and stuff are on the website. The website so. yeah. That was our, our hope, Jeff, was is that we would, customers would be able to go online and uh, download to their choosing. I can kind of see where having reference materials might be something beneficial. Uh, I never thought about the, uh, the 120 page book and some of those things that uh, would be there. I'll, I'll also check and see if Ashley and, and those guys have, I'm sure there's paper copies in there somewhere, but uh, I think the original plan was is to try to, you know, put it on the website so that anybody can download it as they wanted to, and then electronically sign it too so you didn't have to print it out. But I'll double check. There might be some good things. I'm just trying to figure out where we would put that. Yeah, but so Dale it, lets you actually walk in to, I'm trying to remember, it's been so long since I've been into her offices. They got the big office space with the table and stuff out in yep. front, right? Yep. And that's where the materials are at? Yep. Okay. Well, well you, know, you, you know, even on that that point, if somebody wants them printed off, the city, you know, city hall should be able to print them off. Yep, yep. And, be, you know, you know I'm for thinking that the 120-page uh, booklet, those should be hard copies we can get from the state that we just yeah. we have a, a you know a package of those that we can put out. Can you take and give us any idea what other, you said two tables were the documents, uh, building permit we don't have to worry about, uh, that's kind of online, but uh, to be filled out with the, the, the state code and... Their <coughs> landfill rules, their landfill fee structure, um, um, I, I don't know what else I... Okay. The rules should be a, a document that somebody signs, like at the plant when you, uh, your first time out there when you are first getting on the contractor's list out there, uh, you get a list of things and rules and you have to sign off on those. And then you take the G8, which is the educational piece, and there's a whole other set of rules there, and you have to take the test, and you don't can't, aren't allowed to do things out there until you complete the G8, pass the G8, and then you get a, a card and a sticker. So you've got a sticker on your hard hat that we know that you've been trained. Oh, on the hard hat. And then see, I'm I, I'm trying to figure out and help me out here, but so. The, uh, our uh, our uh, landfill, John Hams does that, so that's a public works. Would that be a document that we have a public works? Or where would you go first if you were going to come and look at landfill permit for Well, you, you got to come to City Hall to get the key, basically, yeah. don't you? Yep. So that's where the form should be at then? Yeah. Yep. Is there any wall wall space available in the entry? I'm trying, I'm trying to, to think if you had like a corner. full, you know, one hanging on the wall that it would have those different, you know, five or six different. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've got one in my one. office that I have files in, you know, that sit right there. Yeah. The other option might be is is that have them open up the chamber and put that on the tables there because it doesn't get used so much anymore, and then close it up and lock it when they leave. You know, just be yeah. be an extra entry point, but. Uh, I'll check on that, see what we can do. So on a tangent here, um, last week I got on to uh, recycling of appliances. And, uh, you know, for probably when we get a new stove from Tom, you know, Tom takes the old one and he handles it. But a lot of people have Tom drive far to one by that stove or by that refrigerator or 
and then they haul the piece out and dump it someplace, the old one. And, you know, I, th I think we still have a fair amount of people in the community that do things that way. And what happens to all that stuff? I was surprised two years ago, I went out walking east of town by Mike's there. God, people throw all kinds of crap in the ditch out there. I was just, there's an old toilet, and I don't know, I, yeah. I assume the county comes and cleans it up, but yeah, there was all kinds of debris out there two years ago in the ditch. Yeah. Yeah. In the springtime, as soon as it was. But uh, on the, uh, with the metal container that we have out at uh, Public Works there, you know, you can't obviously lift a damn stove up into that thing. Yeah. I've thrown my heater and stuff away before, but we should, uh, I'll take and talk to Jim. There should be a way for them to load it up. And, and if you drop it they up do. right next to it. If, if they can't get it in the dumps, they just dump it. And then they... Yep, and then they load it up. They load it yep. with the loader. Because there's a little bit of value that they get when they recycle, I think, for the metal. But Well, I, I did find a place in Grand Forks that does some recycling. <clears throat> but, you know, all your refrigeration equipment is supposed to have... Uh, free on ex extracted from it yep. where you dump it. Well, I don't think that's happening. I think we just haul it over there and leave it on the ground over there. Either that or they drop it off outside of our John Deere's metal dumpster out there. We've Is that what yeah. you do? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that happens, too. Yeah. No, we usually have a, yeah. uh, every couple months there's Simonson. a stove or a fridge. He's, he's got a place out in the country out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he oh. picks... I think he he Nancy did take Nancy and Marvin Tom's Nelson's stuff. old place. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. What a what a trash. Yeah, that is hoofta. And I thought Manthes used to take it over here too. I don't know if they still do or not. Well, we get Mike Mooney too. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's. I mean that. Getting that stuff put away safely, I think, is important. Yeah. Well, I don't think Mike Boney is worried no. about the free no. home take it out. <laughs> in fact, out of the whole group, I'm not seeing a lot of people <laughs> extracting free home. Just, just guessing. But Jeff, you got our attention. What else is there? Uh, you, you can boot me out whenever. Uh, this isn't necessarily planning and zoning, but what you're saying, uh, the following discussion I've had with two other uh, I'll say trades people in the area um, and uh, <laughs> the three of us are fairly disgusted with uh, people's egregious abuse of the city the public works containers or what's down here at the armory I'm lost and uh, they'll just pitch whatever and whatever with reckless abandon yeah. and uh, uh, and, and I know when I visit with Public Works, they'll tell you, you know, uh, garbage is their biggest headache. I mean, whether it's those containers or the landfill. And I, 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 I don't know how a person's supposed to uh, help with that, but, but I, speaking for myself and, and two others, you know, uh, we find it a valuable service that we're trying to respectful of and and there are people in town with this I, I, I don't know how to finish the sentence go well, back to beautification right Blake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well I think one one group there's a, there's a group on the on the north side of Caledonia on Maine that owns rental property that is habitually the site for garbage being dumped and left for someone else to clean up. And I don't think that if they're operating a rental property in the city, I think it should be their responsibility to get their renters to clean that crap up rather than leave it for the community to clean up for them. Now, what we did do, um, was it two commission meetings ago, Mike? Um, we had a, a gentleman and his wife, a veteran,
come up and they do uh, cleanup services, you know, storage areas all the way through. Um, and we talked about, you know, having the ability to give them a call for some of the properties that Mike and Levi are looking at to uh, come in and do that cleanup. And then we charge it back either through taxes or if the, the tenants or the renters can't pay for it. So, Joe and Joe, and Joe can't uh, remember us. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, I saw it. Must so, be. that we haven't pulled the trigger on that capability yet, but, um, and it's been kind of surprising. Some of the properties have actually picked up some of their garbage. There's still more to go. Uh, the snow has slowed that down, but uh, I think, again, this is one of those issues where having somebody outside the city that we can then approve and hire to come in and do that uh, might be a, a longer term solution for us, hopefully, that'll help us out. But uh, yeah, and then uh, I don't know, he hauls it to Fargo, if I remember right. Did he say he hauls it to Fargo? Um, he would use, he would use our dump. If he could, yeah. Then some but he like tries to recycle as much as yep, he can, yep. so. which is good. So, but on like the, I said, on, we got that presentation, but we never locked him in. But on the other hand, if it's a rental property, it should be up to the owner of that rental property to make sure that his property is policed properly. Well, that's the problem. Is that I don't think that anybody has confronted that. Well, one of the four, there was an eviction. No, this is this is the property over here. On yep. First, the uh, the one uh, owner, and I can't remember which one is which. They all came together to me, but there was an eviction that, that yeah. was happening in a month or so. So that, uh, and then he was going to sell the property if he could, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But there was one out of the four that actually the renters were going to, they were evicted out. It sounded like they weren't paying their rent and stuff anyway, so. Well, I think this one over here, Mantis ended up cleaning up. Some. Uh, no, I mean, literally cleaning up. It's yep. the, you know, down from Connie, uh, Connie Martinez's place. Wait, what's Jeff sold. House. Regarding your rental statement. Jeff Hanson. Jeff Johnson's house. If I'm allowed to blabber someone. Oh, oh we got you. Florida. You know, yeah, there's the, there's properties that are on Caledonia and Maine that are, you know, high profile places, but uh, this past summer we had a building permit to do work on the Martins house, which uh, also was our renting, and on the Holmberg. Uh, property and uh, then you have our saviors so just based on where we're located and those we were up and down that alley a lot and sure there's a church apartments rental property that uh, I was surprised how many months you know, a mattress could just lay out there you know, next next to a dumpster and uh, <coughs> so yeah I, I in the alley? Oh yeah. So so let's let's just make up a name like Andy as a property owner uh, or manager of the group of money. Anyway, yeah, I uh, I guess mattresses bother me a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, because they they won't get out of their truck to pick something like that up. No. Oh, over here. Yeah, that's what you see down the road on the because they'll load them in their vehicle and drive 500 miles an hour east of town and they'll fly out and Oops. fly into the ditch. Uh, yeah, there's one. There's one on 81. Yeah, 200 going that way. Yeah, the one by the by the. I thought somebody just stopped to take a nap. But <laughs> it looks it looks kind of uncold and uncomfortable. Yeah. So. But this one over here is is uh, oh next. Down from OK Fawcett's old house. Oh, right next to it. Yeah. With yeah. The yeah. That red guy. And white. That guy got evicted or something. Well, somebody there. died. And then the yeah. rest of the family moved. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. That guy did come in and some of this clean up a bunch of crap stuff. in the back. Yeah. Still. Yeah. That That's the. That's the. Uh, one of the guys' uh, sons of silence. Yeah. Yeah. 
in the house over here isn't doing all that well. Either. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And I, I've been in to talk to them before. So. Well, we we got to start at least if we can get a couple of them going. <laughs> it's better yeah, than. I think this was a good start. <clears throat> no one's kind of put the kibosh on some of them now, but Jeff wants to ask another question. Um, our bread and butter is service work, and I don't think we average doing a new house even every other year. But uh, and and what we have built are incredibly modest. Uh, in fact, uh, the the slam would be the, the just a salt box. Uh, there's nothing grand. There's not 29 more things. But uh, I guess the question that I got, you know, of Lowry and you know, Zoe, who's spoken quite a bit with Zoe back over, and uh, um, I, uh, the other names escape me right now. But uh, you know, if if I'm going to say if modest housing is is uh, something that we think the laborers need. Um, I, I haven't had anyone say that there's a place for it out here. Um, you know, the least affordable lot, which isn't the answer in its entirety, is just like 22,000. Well, there's possibly two houses side by side in town that could be acquired theory for that. Well then, the excavator to tear them down versus specials, it's still kind of a wash. But at least here in the existing part of town, I think we'd be allowed to build a modest home. Whereas, I'm not so certain that would be welcome across the interstate. I, I tend to agree with your assessment there that uh, Having talked to John and, and Pat, and Zoe's the lawyer, but uh, um, I think that they have a, a standard in mind out there. But I like your idea about brownfill, of taking some of our older structures. And uh, I think well, I was, some of the ones that I was quoted was 14000 for one out there, but by the time you get the specials on, you're looking at that 30000 35000 for for some of those narrow 50-foot lots. Yep. But I I would be an advocate for some of the brownfield, taking some of the old houses in town. And uh, I don't know if we would ever be able to do it, but I would look to the Hillsborough uh, EDC to see if there would be some money for, you know, to take and do something like that to, again, stimulate. Now, you are aware that all 10 of those low-income houses out there they want to sell all those, and uh, then they want to go to this, uh, this uh, you know, where you get a voucher, voucher system that, uh, thank you, that uh, they use for rentals. But um, the last time I talked to them was so oh, probably mid-year last year that, uh, you know, those they would like to take and just sell for $50,000 a piece. But what I see out there is you've got excess space on those lots that you could build better or twin homes that would still be available, but uh, I have to go through Lake Agassiz and some of those. There's money that they that I've been trying to find that would allow us to do some of that. But they want to sell all ten of them, you know, for fifty thousand a piece. So you're talking a half a million dollars. And with the string attached with the voucher means that you need to provide it as housing at pretty much existing rent. If, if, if someone, if a private investor bought those, uh, or a number of those, the voucher is good anywhere. So what they'll do is there's a kind of a, the voucher's for so much, and then if you have extra expenses above that that you can't afford, then they kick in and help. But it, it, the voucher, you don't have to rent to the low income if you buy that as a private investor. I, see. I thought you had to, and I was going to say it, it's upside down, it doesn't cash flow. Oh, right. So, and uh, but my understanding is is that if a private investor came in and bought all those, they would be issued vouchers. But it doesn't mean that you have to rent to them, which means it's a bigger problem for us 
because now we have to find somewhere else in uh, Hillsboro to uh, take and rent, uh, you know, to them. But, and I had uh, tried to see if Dagelman, uh, you know, would be interested in, if you could, or American Crystal, if you could find somebody like that that has a vested interest in being able to have affordable housing for their workforce, and to me, American Crystal. And who's the vice president, the lady? Uh, Bruce. Lisa Borgen. Yep, Lisa. And I talked to her a couple of times, and she didn't say no, but she didn't say yes. But she understands that they're spending big money with the transportation cost. You know, when they own their own Surrey, I think they wore a Surrey out every year. And I don't quote me because, you know, this has been a while back, but I think they said they spent a half a million dollars just on transportation to the Hillsboro American Crystal. Well, if you could take a fraction of that half a million, half of it, and you would be able to invest it into brownfill and in building, uh, but we need to have a partner like that that we can work with. I think Dagelman now, he's looking at another 30 to 50 more workers where the expansion out there. So, but I just haven't been able to close the loop on that low income housing out there, but that's a pretty good stretch there that would be able to, and then why didn't we ever hook that up to go straight east across with the uh, the other housing back there? There's kind of a... I don't know. Oh, <laughs> from Kiwanis to... Yep. Yeah, why that ever got opened up? I that just know. seemed like a, a no-brainer, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because now that, that, yeah, that property could have been used if you could have put a street in there. Yep, yep. Plus, our... <laughs> Some of the uh, water issues out there in the spring and uh, for runoff and stuff would really be, you'd be able to get a ditch where you could get it out to the west and get it across. But, you know, if you're interested, Jeff, but like I said, I, I haven't worked on it for, you know, about a half a year, but that's another one that we'll have to roll back into. And uh, fortunately, Mike doesn't have to politic this year. <laughs> oh. But I, I always thought that that would be a good idea. Well, who, who owns that parcel in between the low-cost housing and Kiwanis? I don't know. <clears throat> and is it even? Yeah, it's an accident the way I see it. I don't know who owns that. <laughs> well, didn't Berg actually own that all one time? Uh, Ooh, the lawyer, Berg. Brown? He owns something out there. Yeah. Uh, but another one that I looked at is, you know those brick ones that are down by the big apartments, kind of where, down by Valley Plains where Mike's at? Yeah. Green. There's, there's one evergreen. God, if you could get those two cheap, tear them down, that's a huge lot. You could put a fourplex in there. Your instead has the corner one. So the Rodney. one to the east is for sale. It is sure it's landlocked. You can't even put a garage on it. You'd never be able to get back to it. That east one's a dead horse. Yeah, but if you could get both of those, that's a huge lot. You could put a fourplex in there, easy. So well, what's, any, what's it's, uh, it's, uh, yours want for his? Anybody heard? He's called me a couple times about building a tiny house in there. <laughs> I thought, oh, please don't. <laughs> yeah, because those evergreens, they, they need to be torn. They've been... Well, it, it's... We almost... That's another one where we might have to have it inspected just to see where they're at with that. It, like I say, to kind of force the issue, but uh, yeah, everybody that stayed in those apartments and stuff, uh, you know, they're really disappointed because they haven't been kept up. Uh, Melissa Beach and her family, they, they just, man, they complained about all the ones that they looked at. They said they're just not taken care of. You know, and then we got that wooded spot right across from the county that, uh, you know, we've been trying to dick her on to see if we could put something in there and kind of a, as another way to take and get that property taken care of. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a wet one. That's, yeah, a, that's a, a big wet mess. Yep, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pit. And, you know, and then she has a hard time taking care of the property because of it. So, so I like your idea of the brownfield. What were you asking about? <laughs> Between the north and north. Between that. Oh, let me go up here. You got a parcel between 
low cost housing Going at the Duwamis. And if you kept on driving at So Duwamis. here's the low cost in this area right here. So this is Kiwanis Drive 1 and 2, and then it says Kiwanis Edition. So, but it's oh. this acreage right here. So I don't know if Kiwanis owns it or not. And then uh, I noticed that, uh, you know, the three twin homes up here that Jordahl's doing, they're, they're kind of slow right now. They haven't done a whole lot since I the snow know. caught them, so. Well, so they went around the curve. Didn't they go around the curve? No. Nope. Nope. So it's, uh, it would be yeah, this one, right. this one, and this one. Oh. These are done. And then the curve is, they got the big dumpster and stuff in here, so there hasn't been anything <coughs> in this area yet. But yeah, to me, this, you know, and again, you got uh, your 10 houses here, low income. Well, you could probably put, and I, I'm just wagging it here, probably another six fair size ones in there. And uh, you that know, green space is all Kiwanis. Is it Kiwanis? <laughs> well, that makes sense. They probably thought they might build a third building. Calls for development. Yep, there you go. <clears throat> so, those would be some areas, that, you know. In, then everybody's aware that uh, the golf course, you know, talking to Ryan and his team, uh, he brought it up at uh, the uh, HEDC, and, and, you know, it's been discussed too, but having that event center and the pool of where the driving range is, uh, you know, and kind of have something uh, special there so that their clubhouse, as it eases its way into the river. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't belong to the golf course. Right. The school has got a lease uh, from lease. the state land. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's state land? Yes. That's state land there. Yeah. yeah. So we'd have to do some negotiating to see if, uh, mm -hmm. if that would work or not. But, uh, well, maybe you need to talk to the state about it. Yeah, the school would have to do that, I suppose. Well, Paula, yeah. she said she's willing to, to go along with it. Uh, they could move the driving range somewhere else. And then uh, we could use the Main Street Initiative potentially to see about trying to get the state to turn that land over. I, it, having that state, you know, where the gravel piles and stuff, the state, uh, you know, uh, that area there, boy, that that would have been nice to have kind of co-located with the county and stuff too, but that's, uh, that's some pretty prime real estate right in through there too. Well, it's still pretty likely that the school would go over by the elementary school, right? Yeah. That's what they're, that would be. they're you know, on the, the, the south side of the shelter belt, they're mm -hmm. tearing part of that out and uh, and doing it. I will tell you that Pat Mueller has given a hell of a lot better offer for his land out west than, than Cardboard's family is doing for oh, their sure. property. So. Sure. And then I, I don't know if you guys are really hard over on it or not, but part of their demand is, is that they want to have that street named after cardboard. Yeah. Well, right now, it's, the names on those streets are Luna's Avalos, which is Avis and Lois. And then it's been mentioned if they do the, the, the new high school there, you know, there's also kind of some folks that are talking about putting the pool with the high school at that point. So, but ICON doesn't finish that study up until August, if I remember correctly. And what they're working on is the projection. How many more families will be coming in? Well, I don't know. It, they tried that one time. It, it, and they were pretty, couple times pretty wrong. Right? They, <laughs> with the pool <laughs> with, over there. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Green and I were on that committee one time. That was brutal. <laughs> now, if you put an event center up there with the golf course, there's some synergies and stuff with a pool there that would be year-round, indoor, but now you'd have places where you could have events besides yeah. and have a small bar, restaurant type of a environment there. You know, uh, 
Panimanti was wanting to let go part of her parcel earlier to somebody else. Which one is that? That'd be next to Mike's place on the softball. Oh, okay. That piece on the right hand side there. Yeah, we tried to approach them before Pat said yes. And I was going through uh, Paul Garay, Noom, and uh, we couldn't get the yes on anything. So, And the trouble on the curb up there going out of town to the northeast, that's in a trust and it's locked up. Well, that was two years ago. So it's locked up for another 18 years. Where, where's that? So where the curb is up there by River Bend? Because <clears throat> uh, we thought that with, uh, you know, Doug and Sue and all these here. All up in there. But this is all yeah. in a trust. So there's no more expansion. That's Brunsdale's land. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so and I think it's another 18 years before that would come up. What about south? Uh, another nice spot is right across the road, too, south of Kenny Cotton's. But. Downs land or edge downs. Is there any more land available or lots available up by where uh, the plaster guy lives? Well, that's um, north of the. North Jason Seeger owns that now. Yeah, yeah. Seeger owns that. Uh, Seeger owns what used to be north of north of. Uh, hey, right up in here. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Up in there, Seeger owns that now. Yeah. Okay. There's no infrastructure out there, though. Isn't Seeger planning something, and isn't Wisney planning something? He's planning on building a house there, the last I heard. That'd be North of Growth. Yep. And he'd ha have to ask us to annex in because that's not in the city, is it? No. 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 <clears throat> well, even a little chunk that uh, Birch. Oh, uh, yeah, with Allison. Allison Birch and those guys, that's not annexed. Yeah, and then no. we're, we, so far they haven't signed it, but they asked us if we would run the, the infrastructure into them. Um, water and electrical. I don't think sewer. We were, didn't have to worry about that, did we? Yeah. Was it all? Yeah, free? they were going to tie in. And yeah. uh, you know, they were. They came in to the commission meetings, and we said, "Yeah, we'll take a look at it legally." And John Julson wrote up the contracts, and they haven't signed them. So, well, see, they won't. I do not believe they'll be able to connect to. No, they'd have Jeff to, Nelson's. No, they'd have to. They'd, they'd have, have, to, have to have a pump station that went to the main. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we talked about that too. And then we made the agreement that there's how many more lots is there? Four. There's there's five lots. Five lots. <clears throat> and so they if they improved any of those other lots after we ran infrastructure into them, then we would have to take they'd have to take and you know we'd have to they'd have to take and pay for the infrastructure for those if they did any improvements. But yeah, Allison was in along with, they came in twice, if I remember right, and John got everything written up and spent a couple yeah. commissions ago, and he said that they, they hadn't come to sign anything yet, so of course it's winter time, so get more of a springtime project. Well, and then you got a little strip all out there that runs behind the trailer course. Is there ever going to be a way that we can get that damn trailer court out of here? <laughs> Doubt it. He, he's, well, he's been better about paying his bills lately, but God darn. Who, who is it again? It's a guy uh, in Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> no names, anyway. 
keeping up on his utilities, or is he behind on that again? Well, I don't know. It, uh, but boy, it'd be nice. That'd be easier improvements because those are all, you know, you pick them up and move them away. But uh, yeah, even the lights. Remember, we're having trouble with the lights on it because he's got to repair the lights. We don't own the lights in there, yeah. so. Uh, they used to belong to S and S contracting. Yeah. Now, uh, anybody ever hear if it was ever called Arrow Enterprise? No. I'd have to go back and have Julie look up. It's H H Burrow, isn't it? Isn't that the name of it? H Burrow. It be something like that. I I could say. South of Loyal Avenue, with deals ever sell? Um, I don't know. It. We never approached them directly, but who was I talking to said that there might be a chance to get some of that. The whole problem of it is, it's just like you know, by the armory. The church has that strip there that, uh, you know, there's no water or anything that goes into there. So anything that would cross, you know, the post road, you'd have to have all the infrastructure coming from the city to get out there. You won't be able to build on that <coughs> land anyway. On the deal land? No, on the church, church land. Right. Uh, that's, I, that's just for the city. Well, I talked to them about, you know, they didn't want apartments, they didn't want commercial property out there. But we did have a conversation, you know, eventually with the city or the church council um, about uh, if we could put an apartment in there. But then we ran into the issue of the water, the sewer, and all that stuff. There's nothing down there. So then it pushed the price, you know, too high for low income. And so, but I think, and Jeff, you're, you're probably closer to it than I am, but I think the church council would allow something that's not commercial. They just don't. You know, they, they kind of draw their, the line in the sand that they're not going to let a commercial entity take and move into that property. So it, the way that they phrase it is it has to be for the citizens of Hillsboro. It's kind of the way that they look at it. But Cody and, and the folks, when he was on the council there, he was, he was open to have the discussion with it. But <clears throat> you're not going to put a meat pack and plant or anything like that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's hard to hear the breeze when the cows are bellowing. <laughs> <laughs> anything got any, uh, got anything else? I have nothing. Well, it's been an interesting discussion tonight, and uh, I'll yeah. take a look at some of the things that you've got. Jack said? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried.